Now we proceed on to the next question. The next question is related to the greatest integer function. The question is gx is defined as box of x Okay, and now you are asked to discuss the continuity of the function. at integral values of x okay now let's assume that let's first get rid of the box function and let's see what gx is to find what gx is let's assume let's take two cases first in first is x is an integer and the second is x is not an integer so i can write x as some integer plus some fractional value now, when x is an integer, gx becomes what? Which is nothing but 0. When x is some other value, not an integer, this becomes n plus f. Okay. Now, box of n plus f is n. And this one, I can write it as minus n plus 1 plus 1 minus f. Obviously, you can see that this is something which lies between 0 and 1. Okay, So, box of an integer plus something which lies between 0 and 1 is the integer itself. So, this becomes minus 1. So, I can redefine gx as gx is equal to 0 if x is an integer and is equal to minus 1 if x is not an integer. Okay. From here you can see that for any integral values the left hand limit will be equal to the right hand limit will be equal to minus 1 because when you are taking the left hand limit or the right hand limit, obviously you are taking values which is slightly less than some integer or slightly more than some integer. So that value will be equal to the functional value will, will be equal to minus 1. But the functional value at the function at an integer is 0. So the function is discontinuous at integral values. Obviously the, uh, the continuity is of what type? The continuity is of removable type because you can obviously redefine the function such that gx is equal to minus 1 for integers. Next we take another example. The question is fx is defined as sin of 2x plus a sin x plus b cos x divided by 2x cube and then you are asked to find it said that the function is continuous at x equals to 0 and you are asked to find the values of a and b and also f of 0 okay now since the function is continuous at x equals to 0 the function should have a limiting value at x equals to 0 if I find the limiting value which is equal to the functional value I will see it comes out to be b divided by something approaching 0. Now obviously something approaching 0. Obviously to have a limiting value which is existing you need to have both the numerator and denominator of the form uh, 0 by 0 form. That means what? What is causing a problem here? The problem is being caused by b because since b is some value, this part is 0, this is 0, but this is not 0. So, in, in order to get it in the form of 0 by 0, my b should also be 0. Okay? Now, if b is equal also equal to 0, I can write this as 
I can take sin x common. Let's take this 2 also common. Now, here I will get 2 cos x plus a by x square. Now, this should also be of the form of 0 by 0. Now, if I put 0, x equals to 0, I will get 2 plus a on the numerator. This should be equal to 0. So, my a is equal to minus 2. Now, I can write here it as minus 2. Okay. Okay. Now, I can, what can I write this as? 2 cos x minus 2. I can write this as minus 4 sin square x by 2. Right? And now what I'll do is, I'll take it here. Now this becomes 1, this becomes 1. So my answer is minus half. So my f of 0 is equal to minus half. Okay. Now we take some more problems before we end this chapter. The next question is, y is equal to fx is defined parametrically as y is equal to t square plus t mod of t and as x equals to 2t minus mod of t where t belongs to real numbers. You need to find fx and discuss its continuity. So, to find fx, you need to get rid of this parameter t. So, to red, get rid of this parameter t, what you need to do is first get rid of the mod sign. So, when t is less than 0 and when t is greater than equal to 0, there are two cases. When t is less than 0, x is equal to 2t minus, minus t equal to 3t. That means what? x is also less than 0 and my y is t square minus t square or 0. When t is greater than 0, x is what? 2t minus t or t, that means x is greater than 0. And y is t square plus t square or 2t square. Now, I can replace t with x, so it is 2x square. That means, if I draw the graph, when x is less than 0, y is 0. And when x is greater than 0, y is 2x square. So, you can clearly see that the function is a continuous function and there is no discontinuity in the function. Next, we take one last example before we end this topic. The question is, fx is defined as box of sin x plus cos x. Okay? And x belongs to 0 to 2 pi. You are asked to find the points at which the function is discontinuous in this interval. Or find the number of points at which the function is discontinuous at the, in the given interval. Obviously, the function will be discontinuous when box function takes integral values in between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, when will that happen? That will happen when x is pi by 2, 3 pi by 4, pi, 3 pi by 2 and 7 pi by 4. So, how many values are there? There are 5 values. So, my answer is the number of points at which the function is discontinuous in the given interval is 5. Okay. So, we end our discussion on continuity here. The next chapter which we will discuss is differentiability.